Good wintry morning to everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm working on a problem that we've been having the last couple weeks and that is freezing water lines on our rainwater collection. So if that is something that's been bugging you as well, stick around and I might have a solution for you. All right, so here's our rainwater collection system. And what I've been battling is this PVC right here in the black poly line freezing every single night. What I've had to do to make sure that the pipes don't break is actually empty all these lines every single night and we have all of our pigs in the barn right now and that renders our pigs without a source of fresh water from about 6 p.m. at night to 7 a.m. the next morning when I come out to feed them. It's not an ideal situation so we need to get constant fresh water to our pigs inside the barn. So what we have in here right now is the water line coming in and it just dead ends inside the stall right here where they typically are. This is their one stall that they have to get out of the weather. And then we have a poly line that comes up here and right now without the pump working this poly line does not get water so what i need to do is come through here and start taking all this apart we're going to reuse a bunch of these fittings this galvanized steel pipe and i have a ton of fittings pipe tubing pumps heating elements outlets a whole bunch of fun stuff to install i'll show you exactly what i'm installing and how i'm going to install it what i like to do is wherever the pigs can reach we use half inch galvanized steel piping and then whatever is above their head out of reach, we're using poly piping just to keep the price down. Of course, I got a diagram, so we're going to put that up on the screen real quick and talk about the philosophy. So as you can see over here on the left, we have our three IBC totes. Those are coming out to the gray pipe, which is our PVC. And then out of the PVC, we have the three-quarter poly line going to the red circle, which is our pump. That pump is going to be plugged into an outlet that turns on at 38 degrees Fahrenheit and turns off at 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So whenever I'm in danger of freezing weather, the pump and the heating element will turn off and then self turn off when the temperature is appropriate and I'm not in danger of freezing anymore. So as you can see, the circuit comes down, loops through the first stall, comes to a, we'll call it like a, a junction of a bunch of ball valves and diverters and then runs down to the other stall. But first we gotta start taking all this stuff apart. So I'm gonna get to work. I blocked the pigs from being able to get into the barn. They're a little unhappy right now, so I'm gonna try and make this quick and start taking everything apart. All right, so we got our first connections to make here. So I have the two 18 inch pipes that I took off the wall right here. So again, these are 18 inch, half inch galvanized pipes. So half inch MPT on each end. I've gone ahead and replaced the Teflon tape. I've cleaned up all the fittings that we took off. Now we have a couple of brass, half inch MPT to three quarter inch MPT brass 90 degree elbows. So on each pipe, we're gonna put one of these right on the top. That way the water line can come in this way and exit the same way it came in. All right, so on the incoming pipe, what I have right here, this is a what they call like a three-way elbow. Again, this is half inch MPT. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on the wall just as you see it right here. Pipe coming in, pipe coming out, and then right here is going to be the pig watering nipple. Three quarter inch male MPT to three quarter inch poly line. What? Where you are. So this is where our poly line is coming in. So we're using three quarter inch poly line. So we've adapted from the poly line to steel fittings down to our half inch steel pipe. Now we have a three way elbow at the bottom, pig nipples going over to a second pig nipple and then the return line going back up to the same fitting where the poly line will go out to the next stall. So that's what we've got to work on next. 
Okay, similar to the other side, we have our 18 inch pipe right here. We're gonna screw on our half inch to three quarter inch female MPT elbow right on to our three quarter inch MMPT to three quarter inch tube bar. We have a lot of things to put in right now, and I promise this will all make sense when I'm done. So we'll give a little bit of a review once I get everything put on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some more Teflon tape on the pipe right here. Now we have a T fitting. Now we're going to come out of the bottom of the T with another eight inch long galvanized nipple. Dock, tearing apart barn. So now that we've got this ready, we have another one of our three-way half-inch MPT elbows we're going to put right here. Only this time, what I'm going to do is actually face the female part of the elbow out towards the other stall over there. So what we're going to do is put an extension on here going out to another pig water on the other stall. All right, so here's what we have. We have water coming in right here, coming from the poly line, comes down to the first nipple, as I discussed before, to a second nipple going out to the other stall. What I've put in right here is just a drain. This is the lowest part in the system. So I put a T-fitting in with a drain right here, and then we just have our return pipe back up to a bar right here. All right, so I think that's good for the stalls. It's time to start running the poly line. So I gotta dig some more out of our barn. I know I have some kicking around here somewhere. So I'm going to grab that, and then I have a diverter and ball valve assembly right in the middle of the system. I'm going to put that together off camera. I'll show you how I put it together once I have it all kind of fixed in, in place. And I'll explain why I'm doing what I'm doing with the diverter and the ball valves. And if my thinking is correct, it's gonna make switching over to kind of winterizing the system uh, between you know using the pump and the heater in the winter switching over to just a gravity feed in the summer it's going to make that very easy so i think my thinking is correct let me set it up for you and i'll show you what i'm talking about All right, so I'm working on the poly tubing, and I'm gonna take a minute and explain what this assembly is right here. So this is a three-way diverter valve right here. So as you can see, it's basically like a T-fitting. It's got one branch coming out here and one branch coming out over here. This line right here is pressured water from the pump or from the rainwater collection system. It is coming in here, and right now, as you can see from the red arrows, the water is bypassing this T-fitting right here and going straight down this loop. So this line right here goes down to the two pig nipples down there, comes back out, and then comes over here to this ball valve. Ball valve is open, thus returning this water right here to the rainwater tanks. In the winter time, or if I have a pig over here in this stall, or this one that I'm in right here, and I need those nipple water is working, this is the orientation that the diverter valve would be in. If nobody is in these two stalls, or I just want a short closed loop system, what I can do is simply flip this over. Now the water comes in, hits this diverter valve, goes up. We shut this off, can't go any further, comes back this way. So now I'm only heating and recirculating half of this system. This ball valve right here is actually redundant. I don't need that. Once the diverter is closed, I don't need the ball valve. So 
I got to thinking about it after I put it in and said, you know, I really don't need this, but I didn't want to tear everything apart. So you don't really need that ball valve. Now what I got to do, now that that is in, is I got to finish connecting up this poly tubing. So that's going to go by really quick. I'm going to hook that up real quick. Then we're going to get the pump installed, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to keep the water from freezing. All right, so this is where we're at. We have the electrical all hooked up, pumps all hooked up. I ran an extension cord out here. I'm going to have to do something a little bit more watertight than what I have, but it'll work for now. We're just doing a test. This is a self-regulating heater cable. So these are made specifically for um, preventing ice dams on a house or something like that. But they're also made for like RVs, modular homes and stuff like that where the water lines might run underneath the house in a space that's exposed to the elements. So you can either wrap that heating cable around the water line, or you can just lay it on top, which is what I'm choosing to do. So we're gonna lay that right on top of these pipes, and then I have this insulating tape right here that we're going to wind around this as far as it goes. I at least want to cover the manifold in front of the rainwater collection system with this tape, just to keep the cold air from touching it. And whatever pipe that I have outside. So we'll see how long this goes. Um, I'm gonna wrap this stuff first. Then I was thinking if I don't have enough of this to wrap the three quarter inch pipe, I just run down to Lowe's and get some of the adhesive tube stuff that they make. So let's start wrapping and see how far we get. All right, so we have the heat cable all on, got it all wrapped all the way down to the last stall. I just turned the water on, I got a little bit of a leak, so I gotta address that. But what I wanna do now is actually run this pump and see if the whole system can work. I want to make sure that the pump is strong enough to flow water all the way through and return it back to the rainwater tank. So let's do this. This guy is not kicking on the pump because it's not below 38 right now. But there you go. So I've run all the heat cable. What I did was actually stacked it between the incoming and returning water lines. And wouldn't you know it, it ended right there at that last piece of tape. Perfect. So let's do this. Let's go ahead. We'll unplug this guy. Plug in the pump. So far, so good. Definitely air going through. Don't see any leaks yet. Go ahead and turn our diverter to let water in all the way down there. I hear a lot of air moving around, but I don't hear any leaks really. So, if the system is working, there should be water coming out right here. There you go. Beautiful. Now, what is gonna happen right here is, this is actually gonna come out to a piece of half inch PVC, and I'm going to tee off here, here, and then put an elbow right here. That way, that nice warm water that's flowing through here is getting returned to all of my rainwater tanks all simultaneously, and then they're all open. So hopefully, hopefully this works. Hopefully this keeps these pipes from freezing. Whoop, forgot the gate was open. He's not sure what's going on. Oh yeah, perfect. Wouldn't you know it? Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. It don't always work the way you want it to, but every once in a while, every once in a while, don't see any leaks happening over here. 
Uh, I've been running the system for a couple minutes and it looks like I got a slow leak here. We got one right here and I got one right there. Possibly one. You got water dripping down underneath here. Definitely have one right here. But as for the rest of the connections over at the diverter valve and over here, everything looks good. So I'm gonna set the pump off, set everything off. I'll come back and work on these leaks off camera. Well, I just wanted to give an update. It is the next morning. It's 28 degrees, about 7 a.m. And sometimes when you do experiments like this, they don't always work out, but I'm very happy to report that this one is working out flawlessly. So you can see that the outlet kicked on because it's below 38. The heater cable right here is very nice and warm, so it's keeping the poly line and the PVC outside from freezing. Pump is turned on and the pigs have water, so with no effort from me this morning, pigs have fresh water all day long. Should get above freezing or above 38 degrees today once the sun comes out, so I'm going to come up later on my lunch. Check on this, make sure that this shuts off properly. I suspect that it will, but there it is, a little bit of an update, everything's working well. All right, so I'm up here after lunch and I just wanted to check in on the system, make sure everything's working well, which as you can see, the pigs are feeding or drinking out of the nipple waters and the system is gravity feeding right now. So the pump shut off, the heater shut off, the system, the automated part of the system has worked flawlessly. So I'm very happy about that. Um, I do have some more plumbing to do on the top of the tanks. What I need to do is... I need to build a manifold and distribute the water that's coming back to the tanks evenly between all three tanks. So I have half inch PVC to do that, a couple ball valves to try and control the flow of the water into each tank. That way they all stay balanced. Um, I did come through and fix all the leaks that we had. Uh, it took me a couple hours. I used a lot of Teflon tape. I continue to struggle with the cheaper brass or stainless or cast fittings that I get off of, um, off of Amazon. So I end up using a lot of Teflon tape. I might use some of the, like the Loctite thread sealant or something like that if I can find some that is, you know, food safe. I guess what I'm saying is I would try and stay plastic to plastic for the fittings as much as possible and try to avoid as much as you can putting plastic fittings into metal pipes. That's my recommendation anyways. But the system's working fine. I'll keep you guys updated. Um, if I have any issues or anything like that, I'll be sure to let you know full transparency as I always do. But that's going to be a wrap on today's video. I'm really happy we've got the system set up and it's working. If you like the video, hit the like button. It does help us out a lot. We do have one more project for the rainwater collection system coming up hopefully this spring. If you want to see that, hit the subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss it. That's going to involve a water heater and a bunch more tanks and plumbing. So stick around for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you have a great day.